Hi everybody! In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create this. It is a very simple text input for Pygame and we can just type something in a box and we have to have the box selected to be able to type anything. And if it's not selected I could be typing but nothing happens. And yeah that's pretty much it. Getting text in Pygame isn't all that difficult. So it should be a pretty straightforward tutorial. Before we get into actual code let's talk about the logic of getting text input. And to get any kind of text input you mostly have to follow the logic of just getting any kind of text. And there are three major steps to it. And the first step is to get a font. The second step is to use that font to render text on a new surface. And then the final step is to use that new surface and put it on the main surface that the user sees in the end. And we are going to follow this very logic. But there's one addition to it. That when we get to rendering the text, we get input from the user from the event loop. So whenever the user types something, we capture it in a string and then this string is being rendered. And that's really all you need to get basic text input. So let's start with that one. And before we get into this fully, I have used most of the ideas in here from a tutorial by SKRX on Stack Overflow. And this guy is amazing. He gave lots of really good explanations on basic Pygame questions. Check out his page on Stack Overflow. He has lots of really good stuff to learn to get better at game development in Python. But all right, let's get into the actual code. So here we have our most basic Pygame setup. By itself, this doesn't do anything because we're not rendering anything. We are starting with the display surface, which is 800 by 800 pixels. We have our game loop, all of this part. And for now, all we do is draw a background and it's completely black. So all we can see is a black background picture. And to get all of this started for now, let's just draw a basic piece of text. The very first thing we need is a font. And I'm going to call mine base font. And to get this one, all we need is pygame.font.font .font, and make sure you get the capitalization right. That this one here should be capital letters, this one should not be. And now we need two arguments. The first one is the style of the font. And we can just go with none, so we go with a default one. And now we need the size of the text. And I'm just going to go with 32. It seems like a decent value. So that's a starting point. And next up we are going to be needing a basic piece of text that we actually want to render. I'm going to call mine user text. And for now, it's just going to be empty. But later on, we are going to use this string to add information into it. So when the user presses A, this one gets an A. If the user presses an S, this one gets an S. But this one comes later. So now we have the first step to create text. Let's go to the second one now. So in our game loop, we need to render this text. And this is going to happen on its own surface. So I'm going to create a variable called text surface. And this one is going to get pygame.render. So we're taking this font and we render text with it. And the first thing we need is the text we want to render. In our case, this is user text. Next up, we need to tell it if it's going to be anti aliased or not. Um, I can just put that true, but you could false in there, it really doesn't matter. And finally, we need a color for the text. And this has to be an RGB value. In my case, I'm just going to go with white. So 255, 255, and 255. So this is the second step. Now we have created text, but it's on its own surface. So if we were to run this, nothing would happen. And I get an error because... Ah, the problem here is that we need base. So Pygame knows what to render. And if we run this now, now we can see that we can't see anything. Cool. But we're getting much closer. So next up, we need screen.lit, and this is the third step to actually put all of this on the actual surface. And this happens to screen.lit, and now we need the surface we want to put on it, and a coordinate. I'm just going to put it at 0 and 0. And if we run this now, we still can't see anything. But if we now type something in here, hello, now we can see text up here. So we are able to draw text now, and we just need to figure out how to get user input. So let's work on that. And let me get rid of this string for now. And let's work on the input. And to get input, we need the event loop. And for now, all that we check is if the game was closed, which is this line here. And to get input, we need to add another one. We need if event dot type is equal to pygame dot key down. So this one just checks if any button was pressed. And inside of this if statement, we can use this event to check which specific button was pressed. And this happens with 
event.unicode. So this is the information of what specific button was pressed. And all we need to do is to add this to this user text. So all we need to do is user text plus equals event.unicode. And if you run this game now, and I can type text perfectly fine. And I can just keep on going and write for as long as I want. This will never stop. The one thing you want to be aware of that right now, if you press enter, nothing happens. It just gives us a random character. Also, if I press backspace, the same happens because neither of these are Unicode characters. So Pygame doesn't know how to render them. And if you want multiple lines in Pygame, it is generally going to be difficult because Pygame can only render single lines at one point. So if you want multiple lines, you need to code this yourself. But all right, so this is some basic input already. Now let's give it the ability to delete something so that we can use our backspace. And this is also quite easy that all we want that if event dot key equals pygame dot k backspace. So for this line, we just check for a very specific key. So now we look for is the backspace key pressed. And this key here and this event Unicode, they are somewhat different, but I do similar things. Think of it like this. This one here is to get the actual information. This one is to look for a specific key. Once this backspace is pressed, all we want is the user text, but we don't want to get all the characters. We only want to get all the characters minus the last one so that we effectively delete the last one. And this one is really easy to do with indexing. And all we need is go from zero to minus one. So we go from the very first character to the one before the last. And we could even get rid of the zero because Python then just assumes it's gonna be a zero. And if any other button was pressed, so else, then we just add whatever other character was pressed. And if I run this now, I can type test. And if I press backspace, this is gonna get deleted. And that's pretty much it for a very basic setup to type text. So if you get this far, you already know how to write any text. But obviously this isn't very flexible. So next up, we're gonna put this into a box, which is also quite easy because all we need to do is to create a rect. And then when we render the text down here, we don't render the text at a specific coordinate. Instead, we render the text wherever this rectangle we created earlier happens to be. So that wherever we put the rectangle later on, it's gonna be the same position where the text is. So in this way, the rectangle and the text are always connected. And to get that one done, we first need to create a rectangle. And I'm gonna call my input rect. And to create a rectangle or a rect, we just need pygame.rect. And now we need a couple of variables. The first one is the X and the Y coordinates. So I'm gonna put mine at 200 and 200. And next up, we need a dimension of the rectangle. And in my case, I'm gonna go with 140 and 32. So the rectangle is 140 pixels wide and 32 pixels high. And to give our rectangle a color, I'm gonna define a color by itself. And I'm gonna call mine for now, just color. And to get a color, we can either use RGB values like down here, or we could use what's called pygame.color. And now we can use quite a few different names to get a specific color. And the one I wanna use is called light sky blue three. So this is a very light blue. And there's a very long list online on Pygame on what colors you can use for this. So now we have a rectangle, but we wouldn't be able to see it. We first have to draw it on the screen. So let's do it and I'm gonna do it before the text. And to draw this rectangle, we need pygame.draw.rect. Now we need an argument on what surface to draw it on. So we need screen. Then we need what color to give it. So I'm just gonna call it color. And then we need the actual rectangle. So input rect. And then we need one more variable and that's the border width, which I'm going to put at two. So if I run this now, we get the surroundings of a rectangle. And in Pygame, if you specify a border width, this one, then Pygame only renders the border width. If I remove this one, we will get a fully drawn rectangle, just in case you're wondering. I just want the outline because the content is supposed to be the text. So now the problem is that we have a rectangle and when we type text, they are in different positions. And that's very easy to fix. The only thing we need is that when we render this text, we don't want to render it at position zero, zero. 
we want to render it wherever the input rect is. So we just put input rect. And if I type this now, this almost works. So if I type the text now, we are almost in the right position. We just have to offset it by a few pixels. And to get this one done, all we need is input rect dot x. And it's plus five pixels. And then input rect dot y also gets plus five pixels. So what basically happens here is that when we put the text on the main surface, we first take the X position and add five pixels, and then we take the Y position of the rectangle and also add five pixels. And if we run this now, and I just type text, then this is perfectly in the middle. There's one more problem though, that if I keep on typing, the text goes outside of the box. So we have to fix that one next, which fortunately is also very easy to do because we can control the width of this rectangle very easily. And all we need to do is get the width of the text we render and then use that to influence the width of this rectangle. So below the text, and I get our input rect, and to influence the width, we just need dot w. So our width is going to be the text surface. And to get the width of this one, we need get underscore width. And this would already get us a kind of working example. So if I type text now, uh, let's call this is a test. So this is somewhat working, but the box cuts off too fast. So we just need to add a few more pixels, let's say 10. And now we start with 10 pixels. And if we now type test, this is a test. This one already works much better. And there's one more thing we can do, because when we run this, at the beginning, this text box is really narrow. So what I want to do is that at the beginning, this text box is 200 pixels wide. And then when we add more text, it gets wider. And to get this functionality, we just need the basic Python method that's called max. And max only does one thing. It picks the highest number of whatever is passed inside of it. So right now we only have one argument, whatever comes out of this one here. But if we add a second one, let's say 100, if we run this now, we get a basic text box. And what happened here is that when Pygame looks for the width of this rectangle, it looks at the max function and it sees these two values. And the first one is 100 and the second one is gonna be 10. So it returns 100, so our text box is 100 pixels wide. But if we keep on writing in it, then at some point, the text surface is wider than 100 pixels. And then this becomes the width of the rectangle. So we have a reasonably working rectangle. And that brings us to the last topic, that what if you don't want to write in this topic? So let's say you want to click outside of it, and then you can press other buttons, let's say, to move a main character. So we need some kind of functionality to deselect this box, which is also quite easy to do. So back in our code, the first thing we're going to do is add, or let's say, update our colors. So I have a color that I'm going to call active, the one we had so far. And then I'm going to add another color that I'm going to call passive. So this is the color when the box is not selected. And in this case, I'm just gonna go with gray 15, which is a very plain gray color. And then next up, I'm gonna create a new color variable. It then follows the activity and updates the color if the box is selected or not. And for now, it's gonna be color passive. And then we need another variable that I'm gonna call active. And by default, it is false. And this variable we are going to use later to check if the box is selected or not. So we can only write in the box if this one is set to true. And I only want it to be true when we click into the box. And if you click outside of the box, it's set to false. So then we couldn't write in it. And the first thing we need to do is inside of this, that this only works if active is true. So if active equals true, then all of this works. If not, it doesn't work. So if you run the code now, we couldn't be selecting it and we couldn't be writing, nothing would happen. And to get the behavior to make this active, I wanna check if event.type is equal to pygame mouse button down. So this is when we make a click essentially. And inside of this, we want to check that when we click the button, is this actually a click on the rectangle or outside of it? So it basically checks a collision. And that happens with if input rect dot collide point. 
and then event pause. So what happens here is then when we click with the mouse button, we get an event and we can check the position of this event. So this is giving us an X and the Y position. And then we can check if these two positions are inside of the rectangle. And if that is the case, we want active to be true. So if we run this now and we click on the box, now we're able to type again and this works almost as usual. So next up, we need to update the colors that if this is active, then we go to the active color. And this happens in the game loop. And all I want is if active, then color is going to be color active, I think I called it. And else color is equal to color passive. Oh, and I forgot up here, but we can do this in a second actually. For now, let's try this. So now we're outside of it. If I click on it, it becomes blue. I can write in it. But what I forgot earlier is if I click outside of it, we cannot unselect it. But this is very easy to add. So when we're back here, when we check the collision, that if this isn't the case, else then active is back to false. And this is pretty much it. So now we're outside of it. If I click in it and I can write something, if I now click outside of it, it deselects it. And if I type now, nothing is happening. And that is literally it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you around.